There are many good videos about the O9G transmission valve body repair. I suggest that you watch a couple of the best. But what you're going to find in this video is what they don't tell you that can get you into serious trouble. Now this is very complex. You have to be surgically clean and very precise. Please don't attempt this if you don't have the skills or the tools. And this is the victim we're going to operate on today. This VW drives fine when it's cold, shifts good cold, but when it heats up, then it starts shifting erratically and very hard. A fluid and filter change did not help at all. So my son ordered a repair kit for the valve body. This kit comes with very detailed, very good instructions and includes all the necessary parts including the drill bits necessary to drill out the separator plate passages. Pause this video and read these instructions very carefully before you decide if you want to order a kit or not. It would be good to have a micrometer as shown here but there's only three different drill bits so you can go by that as to what holes to drill, what to enlarge. This is one method of putting that end cap back on the solenoid. I used another. They both work well. There's enough difference in size of these drill bits that you really don't need a micrometer. This repair kit also shows the length of the springs, the diameter of the springs, and even in thousands the wire of the spring itself. So it's easy to pick out where these springs go. But of course if you do this one step at a time you won't be mixing your springs up to start with. I modified and or checked all eight solenoids in this valve body. Make sure that you read all these instructions first before you start. We took photos of everything, the wiring, as to how it goes, all the parts. We took photos throughout this whole thing and I recommend that you do the same. So if you get confused about where a wire goes or a part goes, you can refer to your photographs. I'm 74, retired professional mechanic and shop owner, but I am not a specialist in automatic transmissions, especially VW. I have done some automatic transmission work. Notice the position of this shift arm and how the arm's tip hooks into the control valve. This shift shaft has flats on it that correspond to the shifting arm. When you remove the valve body, a piston and spring can fall out of the hole shown by the arrow. And here is that piston and spring. So watch for it. It'll fall out on the floor. The spring goes into the hollow part of the piston and the spring goes in first. Every video I make, I make it as simple as I can for beginners. Not everybody is a professional, so professionals, please bear with me. The red arrow shows clutch plates in the transmission. You have a clutch plate, then a metal plate, clutch plate, metal plate, and so on, a stack of them. The head of the piston goes against the valve body where it's marked A, and it shows the direction of the piston. The piston and spring go up into the transmission bore. Take good photos and even notes of how the wires go to all the solenoids so you don't get them mixed up. Another view of that piston bore, lower left, right near my hand. This pan has two magnets, and it's a good idea for all transmission pans, regardless of the make, 
to have a magnet if you can put one in it. You see the cream colored tube with the yellow arrow. If you fill your transmission too full, the excess can be drained off, will go down that tube, leaving you the proper level in the transmission. A weird way to do things, but that's VW for you. To drain all the fluid out, you remove the entire assembly. You were supposed to fill this transmission up, overfill it slightly, run it through the gears to make sure the transmission's full of fluid, then when it reaches full operating temperature, you remove the little drain plug for the cream colored tube and that will drain just the excess that's in the transmission. My son took this pan off and it was full of fluid so he never drained it all. So what I just told you is really a guess, but anyway it does work that way. There is a way to drain it all or there's a way to just drain the excess. And here's the valve body side of the transmission filter. And the pan side of the transmission filter. One through six solenoids are held in by small metal pins you remove with a magnet. As shown here, push in on the solenoid to take the load off this pin and pull it out with a magnet. Now the instructions tell you how to do an ohms check on these solenoids, and that's all well and good. But sometimes a solenoid will have the right ohms check specifications, but still won't work. That has happened. So I wanted to check these solenoids, and polarity doesn't matter. You can access one pin through the end, as you see here, but it's best to access the other pin through the little opening in the terminal connector. If the solenoid is good, you'll hear a good solid click. There will be no doubt about it. So don't waste your time taking apart a solenoid that may be bad. I could find no information about voltage of these solenoids, but they are 12 volts. After you have ground off the end cap, as shown in the instructions and other videos on YouTube, you will see what you see here, the remains of the cap and the little rim at the bottom. Right is before and left is after cutting this solenoid apart. And this is what you'll see, the solenoid and the coil left, that's all that comes out of that, the little brass washer and the little armature as they call it. I call it a metal plunger. And in this photo, you can see the drill bit used to clean out the hole where the armature goes. And you can also see the little flat groove for the retaining pin that holds the solenoid in the valve body. If you don't have a micrometer, use the smaller of the two large bits first, as per the instructions. The magnetic field in this solenoid attracts metal particles and the even higher temperature inside this solenoid will cause those metal particles and fluid to become a sludge around this and that's what you'll see. It'll be like shellac that you take out with that drill bit. They say that that buildup on that armature and solenoid will cause it to stick when hot. And now I have the solenoid ready to install the end cap with red Loctite. I used a small piece of plastic to spread that red Loctite evenly around the solenoid. Do not get red Loctite in the solenoid. This is a method I use to drive that end cap on. But if you don't have a vise, you can use another socket, deep socket, that will fit over the other end where the valve is. Or you can do it as per the instructions, whichever. Tap that end cap on evenly, and when it's fully seated, you'll notice difference in the sound and the feel of that if you've done things like this before, if you're a professional. You'll hear a difference in the sound when it's fully seated. It'll be a solid sound. I have already finished number one solenoid on the left, 
and I wanted to show you the three valves that are underneath this solenoid, valves and springs, and I'm going to call them two, three, and four as we go to the right. If you want to clean these valves and check the springs, be sure to do those one at a time. Again, the instructions will clearly show and tell you the diameter, the length of the spring, and even the spring wire should you need to know. The instructions tell you that you don't have to worry about these solenoids, which I'm calling 7 and 8. These solenoids have only one connector pin in the connector and you ground your other wire, if you're going to feed voltage in to test, you ground the wire to the valve body. And of course your battery lead, your test lead to the pin in the connector. Again, you should hear a loud click. Both of these solenoids had a fine screen on the end and they were clean. Now here comes the really hard part, the really technical part, and you must be surgically clean, as I have said before. Some of these valve body bolts go all the way through, so parts of it you can't remove unless the bolts are out and they are from either side. Some come in from the bottom, some come in from the top. And this is the top side of that valve body, so remove the bolts from the bottom first. You'll be replacing one valve with a new steel replacement. And it goes here as shown. This little valve is held in place by a metal bar much like the pin in the solenoids and you remove it with a magnet. None of my electric drills will hold a bit this small. What you see here is what they call a pin vise because I did so much carburetor work, I have one of these. Most pin vices that you buy work by hand, but you can see in the upper part of this photo I have a hex bit tapped into the end of that where I can hook it to my electric drill. You have to have a very steady hand in using these little drill bits. They break very easily. If you chuck up most of the drill bit, leaving out just what you need, you're less likely to break this bit. Read the instructions carefully. Make sure that you're drilling the right hole with the right bit. I had my son here with me, and it's a good idea for you to have somebody with you too to double check what you're doing because there's no room for mistakes. One mistake in drilling and you've ruined the separator plate. Now here comes the part where there's no room for error and you have to be very careful. So listen very carefully to what I'm telling you because nobody else has mentioned this in their videos. When I lift this part off the valve body, I'm also lifting that separator plate with it. Now why am I doing that? because there may be parts that'll fall out. I'm new to this. I'm not taking any chances. I will carefully turn that part over with the separator plate on the workbench. Since I had never taken a valve body like this apart, I had trouble getting the top part off that you saw in the previous photo. And the reason for that was I didn't take all the bolts out as I've asked you to do. And I thought there was something holding that together underneath this little plate where the springs are. So you don't need to take this apart. I did. And all there is is springs and four little sleeves. Again, and I can't stress this enough, as you remove parts of this valve body, remove the separator plate with it. So you can turn that part over on the workbench and you won't be dropping parts out of it. Even at that, little check valves as shown here can stick to that plate, so be aware of that. There are many of these little check valves in here, and there's a little ear that fits into a slot. And this little ear or tab is shown here, and it fits in the slot where the red arrow is. 
Now, because you have done what I said and held that separator plate with the valve body until you turned it up, like you see here, none of your parts have fallen out, and you can see many pistons, many balls, many check valves in this valve body. If you have any doubts about this, refer to the instructions because, again, it says in detail where every check ball, every valve goes. You need to check for debris and wipe these separator plates clean with a lint-free paper towel. I hope this video has helped you in addition to the other videos that you're going to watch about this valve body. I have warned you about things that can go wrong that other videos have not warned you about. Now, I'm always truthful about my videos, and I'm sorry to say, although this procedure was done by the book, it did not fix this VW's problem. There must be another problem in this valve body that we're not aware of. So, good luck with yours. This kit was less than $100, so, you know, maybe it's worth a try for you, maybe it isn't. This is one example of why I am so happy to be out of the auto repair business. Things can and do go wrong by no fault of the mechanic. You can buy new parts, rebuilt parts that are defective. You pay your doctor regardless of the outcome. And in cases like this, this is true for the mechanic as well. If you are qualified, you should be paid for your time regardless of the outcome if you've done your job correctly. My son works for UPS and I have encouraged him not to come into this business even though I have the shop and the tools. I read in Motors Magazine yesterday that there's an extreme shortage of mechanics. And I can see why. 